Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we will discuss on prelab of experiment one, capacitor. Okay, so the learning outcome here at the end of this lesson, students should be able to explain the experiment to determine the time constant of RC and to determine the capacitance of the capacitor. Okay, so here we have two objectives. The first one is we want to find the value for tau from the graph, and also we need to determine what is the value for the capacitance of the capacitor. Okay, okay, so. Here we have a capacitor. Okay, capacitor here we have uh, anon and cathode. Okay, so if you refer back to this diagram, uh, the shorter leg we call it as cathode. Okay, the shorter leg we call it as cathode. Okay, so how we know actually if you refer here, here actually there is a, a, a negative marker. Okay, here there is a negative, a negative sign. Okay, so here we also have a negative marker. Okay, negative marker here is actually shows that this is a, a negative terminal. Okay, so here we have a negative marker. Okay, for the longer leg here, this one we call it as anon. Okay, where anon is the positive terminal. So what is the functions of the capacitor? So the capacitor is actually a device that is capable to storing electric charge or electric potential energy. Okay, so the function here is actually storage, huh? storage to store electric charges and also to store the electric potential energy. Okay, next one, what is mean by 100 microfarad? Okay, so 1 microfarad is actually the charge of 100 microcoulomb of stored on each of the conducting plate as a result of the potential difference in this 1 volt. Okay, uh, so this is the meaning that for 1 volt, it can store 1000 microcoulomb of the charge inside. Okay, so this is the meaning of 1000 microfarad. Okay, so actually it's based on the equations where our Okay, so as we know, C is equal to Q over V. Okay, so 1000 microfarad is equal to 1000 microcoulomb over 1 volt. Okay, so this is how uh, 1000 microfarad. Okay, explain it. Okay, next, time constant. Tau is a measure of how fast the capacitor charges or discharge. Okay, what is mean by time constant for the current during the discharging process? Okay, so the time constant tau is the time required for the current through the resistance decrease to 1 over exponent. Okay, so it's actually equal to uh, 0 0.37 or 37% of the initial value. So what's the relationship between the time constant, resistance, and also capacitance? Okay, so time constant is equal to RC. Okay. The okay, next one, during charging and discharging process, what is the difference in terms of their time constant? Okay, so for charging, the time constant for the charge to increase to 63% of the initial value. Okay, whereas for discharging, the time taken for the charge to decrease to 37% of the initial value. Okay, so how this, uh, okay, how this value uh, come out? We obtain this value of 63 and also 37%. Okay, so it's actually based on this equation. Uh. Okay, for charging process, okay, for charging process, equation is equal to Q equals to Q not 1 minus T over time. Okay, so when the uh, when at time constant, when t equals to time constant, our q is equal to q naught one minus negative exponent. Okay, so this is equal to sixty three percent or zero point six three of the initial q naught. Okay, so this is for charging processor where it will increase until maximum. Okay, so this is the value where we will get zero point three six of the initial value. So this is the value for tau. Okay. Okay. Next for discharging process. Okay. So for discharging process, equation q will equal to q naught exponent negative t over tau. When t equals to tau, q will equal to q naught exponent negative one. Okay. Or equals to 0 0.37 of q naught. Okay, so for discharging process, q is reducing. Okay, so when q is reducing, when t equals to tau or tau constant, at that moment the value is 0 0.37 of the initial value q naught. Okay, so this is how the value 63% and 37% come out. One is for charging, another one is for discharging process. Okay, next. Okay, sketch and label the circuit diagram of the experiment. Okay, so here I already give you this is the power supply, capacitor, this is the switch, this is the microemitter, and this is the resistor. Okay, okay from the experiment, identify the manipulative variable. Okay, so here manipulative variable is the current, meaning that the current uh, will reduce when the charging process, and at that time we will record the time taken for the charge or for the current to reduce. Okay, during the experiment, why we need to short circuit the capacitor? Okay, short circuit meaning that we need to make sure that inside there's no charge uh, inside the capacitor. Okay, so to make sure the capacitor is fully discharged condition, meaning there's no charge inside the capacitor, okay, which circuit condition will discharge faster? Okay, of course it's a series circuit. Okay, because uh, it has a uh, series circuit has a small capacitance compared to the parallel circuit. So usually, we, if you want to discharge faster, you need to connect the capacitor in series. Okay. okay so for analysis part, uh, when you connect in series, C effective will equal to one over C effective equals to one over C one plus one over C two. If you connect the capacitor in parallel, C effective is equal to C one plus C two. Okay. So this is the graph for discharging process. Okay. Meaning initially it's a maximum, after that it will reduce. Huh? Okay. Next one, how to determine the time constant from the graph? Okay. So from the graph. Okay. So uh, this is our graph. Huh? Okay. The graph. The graph is actually reducing. The current is reducing when it's charging. Uh, discharging time. Okay. So as we know, when T equals to time constant. Okay, t equals time constant as is equal to RC, our I will equal to 0 0.37 of I0. Okay, so from the graph, okay, from the graph, actually this is wrong. Huh? Okay, so from the graph, 0 0.37 of I0, at that moment we will get our time constant. So you need to find out what is the value for time constant. Okay, okay so from the graph, current against T, make the extra correlation when I equals to 0 0.37 of I0, the time constant, okay, can interpret from it. So here, this is the way how you get the time constant. Okay, what is the physical meaning of I when T equals to 0? Okay, so when T equals to 0, meaning that at that moment it is a maximum current or initial current. Huh? Okay, when T equals to 0 before uh, discharging, meaning that at that time it's actually fully charging. Okay, so when it's fully charging only, we open the switch and then we discharging back. For capacitor in parallel combination, C1 and C2, how do we determine the capacitance? Okay, for C effective, okay, C effective is actually equals to C1 plus C2. Okay, so in order to find C2, you, we can use C effective to minus C1, then you will get C2, okay? Okay, why microemitter is used instead of emitter? Okay, microemitter is used because it can measure small current. Okay, okay, why large resistor is used in this experiment? Okay, so large, large resistor is used because to protect the capacitor from that. So that's all for this uh, discussion for prelab experiment one. See you on next video. We will continue to discuss on how can we conduct the experiment. Okay, and also uh, report writing. Okay, so see you on next video. Bye.